So I want to talk about interval notation. Now, interval notation is a positive thing, which is why I put the little happy face. It is a good thing. And if you don't think of it as something that's easy or straightforward, that probably means you didn't learn it correctly. It's supposed to be easy. So I just wrote a few key points about interval notation. It's supposed to be simple and make your life easy. That's because mathematicians are inherently lazy. They want to make their life as easy as possible. So that's what interval notation does. It's used primarily for inequalities. That's what something you'd see like an algebra or something that's the less than, greater than, or equal to, those types of signs. So that's what we're going to kind of explore today. It's also used for domain and range. Now don't get mad at interval notation just because you may have bad memories about domain and range. Interval notation is easy. Domain and range, well, it kind of depends. And it's also used to describe functions, which is something you might see in like an, a, a higher level math class, like a college level math. You might use it to kind of discuss what, uh, what's going on with a function. But we're going to focus in on the basics. So I gave you a worksheet that you could print out, and I encourage you to do that and maybe just follow along, take notes on it, and use it as we go. But I want to go over the basics really quick. So I mentioned that inequalities is usually the first time people see interval notation. So this would be an inequality. X is greater than 4. Another example would be something like A is less than or equal to negative 1. That would be another inequality. And what we're saying is all numbers that are bigger than 4. Well, 5 is bigger than 4. 7 is bigger than 4. All of those qualify as bigger than 4, right? But 4 wouldn't work, right? 4 is not bigger than 4. So if we wanted to graph that on a number line and show all possibilities where we're allowed to plug in a number that's bigger than 4, we would come over here to the number line and we'd start at 4. And because we're uh, strictly bigger than 4, meaning we're not actually allowed to equal 4, I couldn't plug 4 in here, 4 is not bigger than 4. That means that most people would use an open circle and then since it's bigger than 4, we would shade this way because these are all the numbers that are bigger than 4. And we use an arrow to indicate that it goes on forever, meaning it go all the way up to a million, one billion, and use your imagination. So for this inequality, a is less than or equal to negative 1. These are numbers that are smaller than negative 1. But notice it includes the less than or equal to sign. So we could, if we wanted to, plug in negative 2 or negative 5 or negative 10, but we could also plug in negative 1 because negative 1 is less than or equal to negative 1. We couldn't plug in 0 though. 0 is not less than or equal to negative 1. So these are all the numbers that are smaller than negative 1, but we are allowed to equal negative 1 in this one. So when we come over to the number line, we would typically use a closed circle. Closed circle would represent we'd allow to equal that number, and because it's less than it, we would shade all the way this way. Okay, but there's an alternative way to drawing these, and this other way of drawing them is actually really helpful for interval notation. So the other way to draw these is rather than use an open circle and a closed circle to use a parenthesis or a bracket. So you would still go to four, but instead of doing an open circle, you would use a parenthesis. A parenthesis means it's not equal to that number. And then instead of using a closed circle at negative one, they would use a bracket. Bracket means it's allowed to equal that number. So seeing either of these graphs is equivalent. They both mean any numbers less than or equal to negative one. And these are any numbers bigger than four, strictly bigger than not equal to. Okay, so the rest of the interval notation that I've done, the uh, graphs, are all using the bracket and parenthesis, but they work just the same as um, open and closed circles. So I want to write interval notation for each of these. Now, looking at this first graph, this starts at negative 4. And what we want to say is that this is all the numbers from negative 4, and then they go all the way to the right with an arrow indicating it goes on forever or to infinity, right? So what we want to do when we write interval notation is start with the smallest number to the biggest number, or left to right. So negative 4 would be the smallest number, and then it goes all the way to pause infinity. Now, because it's a parenthesis, that means it doesn't include negative 4, so that's how we want to write it on the interval notation. That it doesn't include negative 4. And uh, going to infinity, well, you can never actually equal infinity, so we're going to use a parenthesis at infinity as well. So parentheses are always going to get matched with infinity or negative infinity or something like that. Okay, so looking at the next graph, this starts at negative, I'm sorry, positive 3. 
And at positive 3, it's going uh, at positive 3 equal to, because it's a bracket, and then all the way to the left, indicating that it's going to negative infinity. So the smallest number this is going to be is negative infinity, and then all the way up to positive 3. Now, we use a parenthesis around negative infinity because it can't actually equal negative infinity, but we're going to use a bracket at 3 because it can equal 3. So this represents this graph right here. It's shorter. From negative infinity up to 3, we include 3. We don't include negative infinity because that's impossible. It's an idea, not a number, and so forth. So that is the basics of interval notation. So what, I'm, what I've prepared is just a several examples that are kind of interesting, and, and hopefully you'll get more practice and you'll get better at how it works. Okay, so looking at this next example. We have negative 1 to 6. Now, if you want, you could probably pause the video and try to finish the next few examples yourself and see how you do. But we're just going to charge on ahead. So this goes left number negative 1 up to 6, but it's trapped there between negative 1 and 6. So we would write negative 1 to 6, bracket around negative 1 because we're allowed to equal negative 1, and parenthesis around 6 because it's not allowed to equal 6. Now the next one has two interval notations. And in that case, um, we're going to, I'm sorry, two lines, uh, so we're going to do two interval notations. So for this one, this is negative 3, and that is negative 6. Okay, so this left one goes all the way to negative infinity and then stops at negative 6 and has a parenthesis. So we're going to go from parenthesis negative infinity up to negative 6 and parenthesis again because it's not including negative 6. Then the other line that's here, uh, starts at negative 3 and then goes off to positive infinity. So we include negative 3, so we use a bracket, comma, positive infinity, and it's a parenthesis because it's infinity, of course. And since they're on the same graph, we use a U to represent the union of the two graphs, meaning anybody who sees this knows that both of these are part of the answer or both of these are on the same graph. So the U uh, unites them together and makes them one answer. So we'll use that here on number five as well. This one goes from negative two, negative three, and then of course at zero. So the first uh, little graph there goes from negative three to negative two, union, and then it starts at zero, including zero, up to positive infinity, parenthesis, and that's that. So let's turn the page and look at the next page, the other side some more examples for us to do. This one, however, goes from negative infinity to positive infinity with no breaks in between. And so we would write negative infinity to positive infinity, of course, using uh, parentheses. So this represents all the numbers, all real numbers. And a lot of people use this notation to represent all real numbers because it's much easier to write than all real numbers. Okay, number seven special. It has a whole only at negative one which means that every number is included but negative one. So the best way to approach this is to kind of break it in half. Look at all the numbers to the left of negative one and all the numbers to the right of negative one. So all the numbers to the left of negative one, well, they would start from negative infinity up to negative one, but not including negative one because there's a hole there. And then we go from negative one up to positive infinity, not including negative one again because there's a hole there and put a union. So this represents all numbers but negative 1. So anytime we want to separate one number out, this is how you would do it. Okay, now number 8 has nothing graphed. And in interval notation, we want to represent that as like the empty set. So we, that empty set is a circle with a line through it. And that represents nothing or no solution. Number 9 is even more special. It has three different graphs. So for this one, we'll start with the first graph. That goes from negative infinity, and then let's see, that's at 3, negative 3, and negative 6. Okay, so up to negative 6, bracket, union, negative 3, up to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then 7 there, up to 6, positive, parenthesis, union, 7, up to positive infinity. So we can have up to three. We can have as many as we want. But they all list the different breakups of that, and the unions make them one answer. 
Okay, so now I want to take this a step further, and I want to look at inequalities only, inequalities, and I want to go ahead and write them in interval notation without graphing them. Now, you are welcome to graph them if you like, if that makes it easier for you, but I want to kind of jump right to the answer. So here, x is bigger than or equal to 7. So in that case, we're saying all numbers that are bigger than 7, and it includes 7. So we would say from 7 all the way up to positive infinity, parenthesis around that, bracket around 7 because it's equal to. And that's the interval notation for it. For the next one, m is less than negative 2. So all numbers less than negative 2, but it doesn't include negative 2. So this would go to negative 10, negative 100, or negative infinity. Up to negative 2, parenthesis around that, and parenthesis around this because it doesn't have an inequality. Now just so we're clear, we could have graphed this. One more time, if this had been 0, and then here's negative 2, then this is saying m is less than negative 2, all numbers less than negative 2, that would be an open circle going this way. Or, of course, you could use the parentheses like I showed you before. Okay, so this says 10 is less than y, or another way of thinking of it is y is the one that's bigger than 10. So let's think what we can plug in. We could plug in 11. 11 would work, or we could plug in 20. 20 would work. The idea is it needs to be bigger than 10, can't actually be 10. So really, this is another way of writing y is bigger than 10. It's the same thing. Notice, though, we had to flip the sign. The idea is we want the open part of the sign to face the bigger number, or as you know, they kind of teach you in elementary school, it's an alligator, and the alligator wants to eat the bigger amount. And in this case, the y would be the bigger amount. So now it looks like the problem we saw previously, and we know then that that is 10 to infinity, parenthesis around 10 because there's no um, equal sign, parenthesis around infinity always. Okay, now this one says a is bigger than or equal to negative 1, and a is less than or equal to 4, so it has to be true. It has to be bigger than negative 1 and at the same time less than or equal to 4. So a number that could work in here would be 0. We could plug 0 in because it's bigger than negative 1, but it's smaller than 4. Another number would be like 2. That could work too. Uh, 2, 2. Um, or if you really wanted to, you could plug in 4. 4 would work because 4 is bigger than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 4. So the idea is it's all the numbers between negative 1 and 4, and we are including negative 1 and 4 in the inequality. Okay? Last one from negative infinity to positive infinity. Well, this is kind of like the graph we did earlier. It, it has no bounds. It's just going from negative infinity to positive infinity. So negative infinity to positive infinity. Every number qualifies for that. 